Hey, everyone, welcome to the Sick Podcast. Talk about business and AI. We're going to react to the uh, Sam Altman video. Um, if wait, you what like... happened to the comedy part? Oh, business and AI plus comedy. Of course, comedy. Like, wait, this is like right. we're at a one. We're at a one. right now. It's implicit. Uh, so I'll be Joe or laughing. Uh, we have a, I have a game where I try to arrive a minute, minute early to Joe and give him shit for being late. And uh, no, I just I, I love this show. I love doing it. So thank you all for making this happen. Like this has been an amazing experience. So thank you for all your support. So let's get to the really important thing today, which is just um, Lex Friedman is uh, dropping an interview with Sam Altman. Um, and let's just get to reacting to it. You know, like something that was in the past that was really unpleasant and really difficult and painful, but we're back to work and things are so busy and so intense that I don't spend a lot of time thinking about it. There was a time after uh, there was like this fugue state um, for kind of like the month after maybe 45 days after that was, I was just sort of like drifting through the days. I was so out of it. Um, I was feeling so down. Uh, just on a personal psychological level. Yeah. Really painful. Um, and hard to like have to, keep running open AI in the middle of that. I just wanted to like crawl into a cave and kind of recover for a while. So I should have let that in. Sorry. This is Sam Altman, like talking about after he got betrayed by the board and uh, Ilya, like how it felt and his reaction to it. We have another clip connected to it too. Um, let's go to here real quick. This is about, this one's about uh, the board and ignoring the will of the people. See, is in, in most corporate structures, boards are, usually answerable to shareholders. You know, there's sometimes people have like super voting shares or whatever. Um, in this case, and I think one of the things with our structure that we maybe should have thought about more than we did is that the board of a nonprofit has, unless you put other rules in place, like quite a, quite a lot of power, they don't really answer to anyone but themselves. And there's ways in which that's good. But what we really like is for the board of open AI to like answer to the world as a whole, as much as that's a practical thing. See, is in, okay. in most corporate. And then the next one is, and we're going to react after this last video, it's about, so where's Ilya? What's going on here? Let's see here if I got that at the speed. One, yeah. Ilya did not see AGI, um, but Ilya is a credit to humanity in terms of how much he thinks and worries about making sure we get this right. I had a bunch of conversations with him in the past. I think when he talks about technology, he's always like doing this long-term thinking type of thing. So he's not thinking about what this is going to be in a year. He's thinking about it in 10 years. Yeah. Just thinking from first principles, like, okay, if this scales, what are the fundamentals here? Where is this going? And so that that's the foundation for them thinking about, like, all the other safety concerns and all that kind of stuff, um, which makes him a really fascinating human uh, to talk with. Do you have a, any idea why he's been kind of quiet? Is it he's just doing some soul searching? Again, I don't want to, like, speak for oh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think that you, you should ask him that. Um He's definitely a thoughtful guy. Uh, I think I kind of think of Ilya as like always on a soul search in a really good way. Yes. Yeah. Also, he appreciates the power. I I kind of want to go in there and kind of like read in in between the lines a bit. Like it he it, the, okay. First of all, we go to like Sam talking about yeah. So Ilya and the board took my baby from me, and then I went into a depressive state for forty five days, and I was in shock. And well, they're asking after me, he was reinstated. He After was, he was reinstated, he was sad for another forty-five days. That's right. So yeah, correct. In, in the beginning, they talk about first, like when the job was taken from me, I was in shock and almost went into depression. And then I had this uh, "It's a Wonderful Life" moment. I don't know if you all seen "It's a Wonderful Life." There's an end scene where the guy is like feels really depressed, and then if people hear that he's going to bankruptcy, so the whole entire town comes together and just like starts just giving him money and saying, "You back me for this. I love you. Back me for that." And I actually saw that happen in real life. My mother got cancer and she went to medical bankruptcy and the uh, women from our Catholic church came together, Jeannie Visker, Miss Amazal, um, the Finnerans, um, also uh, uh, Terry Council. And they just came and they're like, here's a, we can talk to the church. Here's one check for all your medical debt. And then here's one check for anything Jordan you need going forward. My mother, like, oh, wow. broke down, my mother broke down crying. And that's why I always remember those ladies in that community. But uh, Sam had that moment when he got the, his baby taken from him. And then he goes and mentions like everyone on the internet was like, we love you for doing this. And he, he was getting text messages from people saying like, I haven't talked to you in 15, 20 years. Things have been very busy, but I love you and I back you. And he said it was quite um, emotional. And then they gave it back to him. They give him the company back after their bullshit drama. And then he's probably like for 40 days after, like you mentioned, he's like in shock of like, what the hell just happened right now? And then who can I, who can I trust anymore? He goes into that too. So 
Um, well, and how I, easily it happened too, right? I mean, he, he, among others, he was part of the core team that built that lab over six or seven years, right? Before anybody mm -hmm. really paid attention. So exactly. those years where it was more of just a small group of people slogging, hoping to make progress, not really sure that they would make progress. Mm -hmm. Like that was all just kind of erased by a bunch of uh, less involved people making some decision as a, as a small group. It's like, well, that's just bizarre. I mean, they basically just took something away from you that I would say it's out of proportion, right? I wouldn't, most people wouldn't really think that they would have the right to do that. Exactly. And you mentioned, you know, they were him, Sam, plus Greg, plus Ilya were like band of brothers. Like everyone thought they were cra crazy for going after this idea. Uh, Sam mentioned a couple months ago, yeah, there's AI researchers from big companies who are going out on social media saying these guys are lunatics. And these same researchers were going to candidates who were thinking about going to open AI and telling the candidates you should not go here. These people are crazy. And everyone thought they were a joke. And now here they are worth almost $100 billion, has Google quivering in its boots and shaking and things are good. People forget how this company could have imploded. And so if you three amigos go through this together, you assume like we're ride or die. Like we're in this to get these are my homies. Like and when Sam got betrayed by Alia, you saw you saw Greg immediately. I'm out. Fuck this. I don't care anything. Sam is my homie. I'm going to back him. And if Ilya would have stood up and said like, let's say Helen Tover and the other board member were, were causing shit. If Ilya aligned with Sam and Greg, then those two board members couldn't do shit. They, they wouldn't have any power. But Ilya went along with her bullshit. And so when Lex was like asking, like, so what do you think about Ilya? Like, what are your thoughts? Sam is usually very quick on his responses, but you can see, you can see, you see it, Joe. You saw the executive gears turning where he was like, <laughs> let me tell you, I really fucking think about that motherfucker. I mean, we know what Sam, Sam's wife thinks. She heard about this. Uh, uh, Greg Brockman's wife thinks she heard about this and walked to the headquarters and cussed Ilya out to his face. And then Ilya got on Twitter and was like, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. <laughs> so uh, I thought Sam was very diplomatic there because he really could say, like, I never want to work with this guy again, and this guy's a piece of shit. But because Sam's a class act, he was like, no, you know, he's a very thoughtful person. He, he is, really. We have a ring list, but we're expanding it now. We also include all of our sources from our YouTube videos and other sources that we couldn't get to. So you just become a supporter of our channel at patreon.com forward slash fic, and you get a ring list with business information, AI research and summaries, everything. We have book recommendations here. You get access to this um, by becoming um, a supporter for five bucks a month. And Joe and I are going to continue to add more books. So if you want access to this, if you want access to our reading list, go to patreon.com forward slash fic and five bucks get you access to this. Plus all of our premium content. We have about 19 exclusive episodes. Check them out. You're doing a good job of taking yeah. the high road and being mm -hmm. diplomatic about it. You got to give him credit for that. Yeah, it was really good. Uh, and as much as he was saying he wanted to crawl into his cave for those 45 days, that's effectively what Ilya has done. I mean, mm -hmm. Sam was kind of giving Lex a hard time when he said, you should ask uh, Ilya those questions so I don't put words in his mouth. I'm pretty sure Sam and Lex both know that Ilya is not going to take any interviews for the moment. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. He's destroyed his credibility. He, so he so where you know, Sam might feel like he should have crawled into a cave or he wanted to crawl into a cave. Ilya has crawled into a cave. Exactly. He said, I'm sorry. And he's gone into his, his cave. He's gone into mourning and he's just like disappeared. And he also lawyered up. Too. I'm also curious about the early days of OpenAI and how they, you know, they were, they were using this, uh, maybe not cynically, but they were using this AI safety uh, idea to attract the best researchers, right? It, it, it feels like your home when they say to you, hey, we're really concerned about AI safety. So we're going to not only research building AI, but also trying to make it safe for humanity. And we have this special nonprofit structure and these board members and so on and so forth. So in that sense, they sort of created the problem that led to this drama. You know, it was like a, the bad seed was in the organization from the beginning. And not only that, but it was exploited, I think, if I understand correctly, it was exploited to hire people who were generally aligned with that thinking at the time. Whereas now it seems like the thinking is, 
hey, make this thing liquid so we can cash in some of our stock. <laughs> exactly. It's That's true. That's a very different <laughs> mood than we're super concerned about, you know, how dangerous AI is going to be. And we want to join the team that's focused on safety. And then also connected to that idea, and you probably have some thoughts on this from, from the political science angle, but the Anthropic team left OpenAI because they didn't feel that OpenAI was focusing on safety intensely enough. And their, you know, their sell to the people that went with them was, we're really going to focus on AGI mm -hmm. safety more than these OpenAI guys. Mm -hmm. mm. So I, I agree with you. And I think it's part of the game of like when st early startups happen, it's like we don't have the capital. We don't have the, the brand recognition. It's a hope and a bet and a prayer. So we're willing to sell you more and say like, hey, we will tell you, yes, this is all about safety. And we're going to do things your way. And it's not malicious. It's not coming from a bad spot. But also they probably undersold how we're about error deployment. We believe we'll get safety through putting this in the hands of people so they can test it and adapt to it instead of just throwing it all out there and people going to shock into complete shock. Like we thought chat GPT was shock. Imagine if they held this stuff for a long time, we eventually get a GPT six or seven and we just, they throw it out there and people will be like, Oh my God, <laughs> like what's, what's going on here? So there's a bit of inoculation as you, you know, like there used to be um, one, uh, I think it was Hannibal. Uh, the Romans tried to murder him multiple times with poison, <laughs> but what he used to do is just, drink a little bit of poison at a time so you kind of built an immunity to it yeah that was an old world and technique. i don't want to say ai is about a uh, poison but i'm saying is like you gotta let society at least touch it so they don't freak out it's like giving kids you all have those friends where you had health nut parents who were like i don't give my kids candy at all or sugar or anything and the kids get their first touch at like 17 and it's like <laughs> done <laughs> it's like, their mind. they can't handle it they get they you get overweight I'm also I mean, things happen Go ahead. i'm also reminded of a kind of moderate politician who's trying to maintain their position uh, and maybe they're moderate, but slightly left, slightly liberal. And then they're being kind of attacked from further on the left by a more progressive politician who's after their seat. And that's the way this open AI anthropic thing feels. It's like open AI is trying to be sort of on the side of AGI safety. They're selling their researchers that way. And then the anthropic people are like, Hey, we're much more hardcore towards this safety direction. Come with us. We're going to build a new lab. And as a result, Sweet OpenAI leg. lost a lot of good people. Uh, as, as a result, they lost good people. And I just wanted to, I wanted to sweep the leg of your idea, the political metaphor. Like, that's what you set me up for, but I couldn't dunk it home. Really well said. And I think when they were selling AI safety, they probably undersold, but we also believe in error deployment. And then um, – then the anthropic people said, this is crazy. You're going too quick. We're going somewhere else for my own company. But then they're a bunch of hypocrites because once ChatGPT came out, they're like, oh, well, we need to release something too. And they released Claude too. So it's like, you know, stick to your game. Their game was like, oh, we'll give it to the enterprises and not the people who are watching because the enterprises know how to use it properly, right? The corporations do things correct, right? Um, but then they change their, change their word on that. So... I think what Sam is also dealing with is like, hey guys, it's easy to put your purity rings on the outside and say, yes, we should be called open, we should be closed AI now. But it's That's another right. thing purity to ring. actually ship something and put AI in, in the hands of 7 billion people. So yeah. let's go, but very good points. Very, we very good We need like an infographic or a Chiron or something that can play at the bottom of our videos that says, how many more days until AGI? Uh, that's what we, that's what we need to do. That'd be fantastic. The guy, he's at. I think he's saying ninety days now, but we'll get to that later. Maybe uh, it could count hours, and you could literally see it slowly <laughs> moving while we're talking. <laughs> what, to really rub it in, and, but maybe it's a picture of him like running to the AGI in a Star Trek shirt. No, but I no. also. It should it should be on a start on the red shirt background with a little Star Trek logo next to it. That's how people know what it is. The logo's going closer. <laughs> I, you're the best joke. Don't that way, when the thing ticks over to zero, everyone can hold their breath, right? I know exactly. It, it, it's here. It's like Y two K. Okay, yeah. uh, let's get to. I think he had some more on Ilya real quick. Come on. I wish I knew. How you to got more it. clips from that interview. I got dude. There's like two hours of content, bro. I, I know, and these Lex Freeman, Joe Rogan talk fest. Go too fucking excuse my language. Go too freaking long. God, I, ain't nobody got time for that. I got time for that. It happened when I did, but it was. A shocking and painful thing to go through. Did it make you be more hesitant in trusting people? Yes. Just on a personal yes. level. I think I'm like an extremely trusting person. I have I've always had a life philosophy of, you know, like don't worry about all of the paranoia. Don't worry about the edge cases. You know, you get a little bit screwed, 
in exchange for getting to live with your guard down. Mm -hmm. And this was so shocking to me. I was so caught off guard that it has definitely changed. And I really don't like this. It's definitely changed how I think about just like default trust of people and planning for the bad scenarios. You got to be careful with that. Are you worried about becoming a little too cynical? Okay, I got to jump in. And I'm not, I am I don't like making classes arguments where like Joe came from Central Valley, came from the hood to the degree. I came from the hood to the degree. Uh, Lex and Sam came from nice, privileged economic backgrounds where there's an environment where you're well taken care of and everyone's trustworthy and blah, blah. But as for the kids who grew up in the hood, it's like, no, there are a assholes out there and you need to have your guard up. It doesn't mean you go around with a, holding a knife everywhere you go, but you don't like be like, oh, there's a guy with giving you candy in a van, free candy. That must be legit. Let me get in. No, that's not how it works. And so uh, I hate how Lex has this idea of just like, uh, open yourself up and just spread your legs to society and let it pound you out. It's like, no, like you need to understand there's a game. Anytime there's power at stake, money at stake, there will be profligates, sycophants, people who are trying to screw you. And you need to protect yourself properly. And so I'm glad that Sam has now realized like, oh, hey, you know, actually there are some assholes out there and I need to make sure I do a little better job here. So 